So you're probably thinking, yet another inbreeding video. Yes, quite shamelessly, I'm making yet another video on this subject. This video will be a follow-up from the video I made the last time about inbreeding, which was on the most inbred royals. So the reason why I'm making an update video is bifold. Firstly, there were a few mistakes on that last video. Now, I'm far from infallible and I'll be the first to admit that. So I'm hoping that this video will rectify my mistakes. Many of you left some very interesting comments regarding my mistakes. And then the second reason as to why I'm making this video is because since then I have done quite a bit more research onto royals and their inbreeding and I've actually found several people who I'm going to present to you in this video who rank higher on the inbred spectrum than the people on the last video. So without further ado, let's move on to the video. Number 10, the King of Spain. The Spanish royal family are vilified by the Spanish media. The former king, Juan Carlos, was a notorious womanizer, with many arguing that he even went as far as seducing the young Princess Diana when she and her husband, Prince Charles, visited Spain in the 1980s. Now, one thing not sufficiently uncovered is the serious issues of inbreeding within the Spanish royal family. The current king, Felipe VI, has made the effort to ensure that his daughters won't suffer from the tarnish of inbreeding. The king and queen are not related by any means. However, the king's parents, Juan Carlos and Sofia of Greece, both have issues with inbreeding. On Juan Carlos's side, we see the remnants of a deadly disease, haemophilia, passed down due to the intermarriage chronic enacted by the British queen, Victoria. Juan Carlos's uncles, Alfonso and Gonzalo, both died from a lack of blood clotting, believed to have been caused by their mild inbreeding. The king's mother, Sophia, arguably has one of the worst cases of modern day inbreeding to note. Two of her great grandparents were brother and sister, and what's even worse is the fact that her great grandparents are also her great great grandparents because the German royal family intermarried. Number nine, Prince Philip. The Queen's children are notoriously interrelated. After all, Elizabeth II and her late husband, Prince Philip, were second and third cousins simultaneously. But one thing not sufficiently disclosed to the British public is how Prince Philip II was a product of royal inbreeding. Prince Philip, like the Queen, is the unfortunate product of intermarriage, which wrapped European royal marriages in the 19th century. For example, Prince Philip's maternal great-grandparents were closely related. Both of his great-grandfathers were uncle and nephew, meaning that their children, Prince Philip's grandparents, were first cousins to one another. Number eight, Charles and Camilla. So in my earlier video, I mentioned this as a secret kept by the royal family, um, but it turns out many of you actually know that Prince Charles and Camilla are likely second cousins. But despite this knowledge, I am still going to present this in this video for those few who may not be cognizant towards this. Camilla's great-grandmother, Alice Keppel, was the mistress to Edward VII of England, and together they produced a daughter, Sonia. Camilla, the current wife of Prince Charles, is the granddaughter of Sonia. But we should also keep in mind that Charles II is the great-great-grandson of Edward VII of England. This means that Charles and Camilla are second cousins once removed. So the product of a second cousin marriage has only gone and, well, married his own second cousin. I swear down, the British royal family are just bonkers. <laughs> Number seven, the King and Queen of Greece. Back in the 1960s, the former King and Queen of Greece were one of the most iconic couples. The King, Constantine II, was an Olympic gold medalist and his wife, Anne-Marie of Denmark, was undoubtedly one of the most beautiful royals of the 20th century. However, one disturbing fact is that they are cousins twice over, just like Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip. On one side of the family, the King and Queen of Greece are both descendants of Queen Victoria. Who, at this point, is the lots of great-grandmother to almost every royal dynasty in Europe? At the same time, however, 
the king and queen of Greece are both the descendants of King Christian IX of Denmark. What makes things worse, however, is that unlike the queen and prince of England, the king and queen of Greece are triply related. When we investigate the king of Greece's ancestry, we can detect many disturbing issues. Firstly, one of the king's great-grandparents was the sibling of another of his great-grandparents. But even more disturbing is the fact that the king's great-grandparents are also his great-great-grandparents, because both of the king's grandmothers were cousins. Fun fact, the former king of Greece is the brother of Sophia of Greece, who I have mentioned earlier in this video, and because of that, they share the exact same consanguinity coefficient, which in English basically means they're the exact same amount of inbred. <laughs> Number six, Empress Napoleon. Napoleon was known for many things. His height, most of all. I'm joking, of course, but one thing many people don't realise about Napoleon is the fact that his family were incredibly inbred. When Napoleon struggled to provide an heir with his first wife, Josephine, he forced Josephine's daughter to marry his brother, meaning that his stepson was also his brother. However, the most inbred member of the Napoleonic family is Napoleon's second wife, Empress Napoleon, also known as Marie Louise of Austria. Surprisingly, Marie Louise ranks as one of the most inbred people of all time, alongside her many siblings, and this is because her parents were double first cousins. Number five, Alfonso, the Prince of Spain. Alfonso was the heir to the Spanish throne in the 1920s, during an incredibly unstable time in Spanish politics. Like Edward VIII of England, Alfonso repudiated his rights to the Spanish throne to marry a commoner. Unfortunately, he passed away in 1938 from a car accident. He would have survived, but his haemophilia prevented his blood from clotting, and so he bled to death. Ultimately, inbreeding encouraged the occurrence of recessive genes to be inherited by Alfonso. After all, Alfonso was the great-grandchild of Queen Victoria, who herself carried haemophilia to many people in her family. However, the Spanish royal family are renowned for marrying close relatives, as I have mentioned previously. Ultimately, Alfonso looked out because of the inbreeding of his ancestors and Queen Victoria's ambition to solidify her reputation as the grandmother of Europe. Number four, Archduchess Gisela of Austria. Gisela is a rather unknown figure to modern day history, and she was the neglected daughter of Franz Joseph, the Emperor of Austria, and his beautiful yet deeply conceited wife, Elizabeth of Bavaria. Gisela's parents were first cousins, which placed intense strain on their children's health. For example, their eldest daughter, Sophie, died in infancy. Her inbreeding was certainly a factor which weakened the child. Another one of their children, Rudolf, suffered from genetic abnormalities. He was a chronic depressive and he unfortunately took his own life. Recent studies have shown a commonality in the Habsburg dynasty and its sufferers of depression, exposing how depression was likely a genetic feature of the family. Archduchess Gisela is a figurehead for the Habsburgs' inbreeding chronic in the modern period. She was forced to marry her own cousin at the bequest of her mother. Because of this, Gisela's children suffered physically and emotionally due to their inbreeding. Of their four children, all of them shared eight great-grandparents, who were fortunately unique. However, three of these were siblings. Number three, Ludwig, the Mad King of Bavaria. Ludwig was a favourite cousin to Empress Elizabeth of Austria, as she appreciated how in touch he was with the creative arts. Ludwig, who has an extant reputation for being insane, commissioned the beautiful Norrishwanstein Castle in the 1800s. Alike his cousin, however, Ludwig suffered from intense feelings of depression, and his consanguinity slash inbreeding is likely a leading cause for these sentiments. Unfortunately, he was outed from the throne with his counsellors claiming that he was insane. However, more modern studies have shown that Ludwig was depressed because he felt intensely guilty for being gay. Nonetheless, inbreeding is the likely cause of why depression was so intensely felt by Ludwig. Interestingly, Ludwig's successor was even more insane than Ludwig was. Number two, Queen Liliokohani of Hawaii. 
Interestingly, Queen Liokohani's inbreeding is one of the highest in the world. Firstly, it must be said that there is an unfortunate stereotype about Hawaii having rampant inbreeding. That was not always the case in the modern period, and it was a custom most likely performed by Hawaiians in more ancient and classical periods, similar to the Greeks, Egyptians and Persians. Nonetheless, Lydia's family was incredibly closely related. Lydia's grandfather, High Chief Kapeokalani, was her great-grandfather twice over because both of her grandfathers were brothers. Number one, Harald, the King of Norway. So in my last video, I concluded that the Queen of Hawaii was the most inbred modern day royal of all time. However, that's not true. And since then I have been doing more research onto inbreeding and have concluded that this guy is the most inbred royal out there. Meet Harald V of Norway the most inbred royal currently alive. It is shocking to see how inbred Harald of Norway truly is, especially in this day and age. The reason why Harald is the most inbred royal currently alive is because his parents were first cousins. Harald only has six unique great-grandparents, and remember, most people like you and me have eight unique great-grandparents. This is because Harald's grandmother and grandfather were siblings. What's even worse is when we look further into his ancestry. His great-grandmother twice over is the niece of his great-grandfather, meaning that Harald's grandmother and the grandfather were not only siblings to one another, but they were also first cousins to one another. They only went further on the royal inbreeding train by making their own children marry each other, producing Harald, the most inbred royal currently around today. And finally, this concludes the update to the top 10 most inbred modern day royals. Please very much leave comments or likes. Please discuss if you have found anyone more inbred or is inbred and you'd like me to discuss them in the future. But as always, I am your host, the Shy Historian, and stay tuned for many more.